He's a Substack sensation with thousands of paid subscribers earning six figures. I spotted his orange badge on Notes, Substack's internal social media platform. Writing for over a decade, Valentin Buna overcame his fear of writing. He launched his Substack in October 2023 and bam, within weeks, he became a Substack bestseller and now belongs to the top 20 health and wellness publications. He's not just an engineer, but also a body engineer and nutrition expert. Valentin believes in the power of consistent effort, even with two kids at home. Once a night old, he now embraces an 8 p.m. bedtime. He learned the hard way that you can't please everyone when writing online. The turning point deciding Valentin hated living in fear and taking bold action. Valentin, you are here today because we met via notes. Substack's internal social media network and you replied to one of my posts and I saw that you have an orange bestseller badge, meaning that you have thousands of paid subscribers, although you want fear to write. And I know that you now love daily repetition. You are interested in health and sports. For two years, you've taken ice bath, which I also think is very interesting. Yeah. You are a nutrition expert and have a family. What else would you like to share with those who might not know you, Valentin? So long story short, I was um, a kid that always had problems with the weight. I mean, I was overweight and obese, overweight and obese. And I, I always struggled to uh, lose some kilos and then put them back. And that was just from the second grade until close to 14 years ago when I was 28. But uh, the day I went to donate blood and they said, no, you cannot because your blood is full of fat or something. I started questioning myself. So I was 28. I was clinically obese and I didn't know what to think. I was 28 and I was thinking, what am I going to end up in, you know, being at 30? So that question was amazing because led me to to do something and at some point i started um, learning about nutrition and eventually after one year it clicked and then i went from from the first time to 85 kilograms at 185 height and i stayed there for one year two years three years everyone was just they were just amazed that i wasn't gaining all the weight back and at some point, they started asking questions. So it started. <laughs> I see. And that's how you became one of the top 20 Substack newsletter writers in the category fitness and healthcare, which is awesome. And you are a non-native. Actually, it's like a 14-year long process that led to this point um, that was August last year when I discovered Substack. So I said, let's start this substack thing and see what happens um and the first thing i i liked about it it was that it was so easy to use and i was scrolling to these options in substack and you know stripe and payment and this and that and finished in 15 minutes everything <laughs> and then i started writing there and publishing on the facebook page it just happened <laughs> Valentin, maybe you can tell a bit more about what the secret weapon is, because I know you shared this story and then you gained like 10, 10 paid subscribers and 183 subscribers overnight. So there must be something that so many people could uh, resonate with. What is it? What makes you so successful? When I started this uh, 10 years ago, uh, it was more like I was pushed by my friends to do this. So... Uh, my friends and colleagues started to lose weight and this and that. And then they said, oh, this is amazing. You're really good at this. Why, why don't you pursue this? I said, Let, let's make a Facebook page and write about it, right? What do you do when you start a business? I don't know. You start a Facebook page, right? And then you create yourself a, a website or something. And then I started writing on a Facebook page. And I started from zero, right? No one knew the page. In 10 years... It grew to 55,000 people. So it's like a stadium. I mean, just to give you an example, when I write now something small like, uh, look, I developed this recipe for my kids. You can find the link in the first commentary, right? 
I get like 2000 uh, clicks in six hours. So the moment I feel that I can understand the platform, I go to another one after doing this several years. So I went to Instagram and applied the same principles of communication. I mean, I didn't follow any kind of, I just put there something when I had the time and inspiration, uh, something that was a little bit funny and something that can make someone say, ah, that's interesting. Hmm, let's like this page. So I think this is one of the, the most important thing in, in, my, in my opinion is that when you post something somewhere, it has to bring some value. I mean, if you put yourself with a cat or something, that doesn't add any value. So I never, ha I never put selfies of myself or, you know, a picture with my kid or something that doesn't add value. You know, if I put a, a picture with, you know, this is my snack, I will put something interesting about apples that, that people don't know. They come back to the page because they know every time they go there, they learn something new. At that point, I decided to create a YouTube account to set up a tripod and to film myself to film myself every day until I, I until I was you know like mildly satisfied. So it took me like almost to three months, so close to a hundred days of uh, daily footage with my phone that helped me be become better of speaking in front of the camera. And that practice allowed me to film my online course that looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> I do something small every day. I mean, you cannot just skip a day from posting something on Facebook or Instagram or Substack, right? If people are not watching you, they're watching someone else. And the money is where the people are watching. This daily repetition, Valentin, is this something you also do on Substack? Because I saw that you shared that before you became a bestseller, you pumped out like 70 posts. And I was like, what? 70 posts <gasps> in just a few months? Is it, do you still uh, do this? That you like do this daily repetition on Substack too? In the beginning, I said, okay, it's a newsletter. How do you send the newsletter? I don't know, once a week or two times a month. Usually um, before Substack, I had like uh, in 10 years, I had 10, close to 10,000 email addresses from former clients. So, and I used to send them like eight newsletters a year or something. When I started the Substack, I said, okay, let's start by sending once a week. The first week I sent one email and nothing happened. I mean, it was like 20 subscribers or something. The second week I tried two and I saw increase. I, I was thinking if I send too many emails or too many newsletters and I said, why not? Let's try this. And in the third week, I started posting twice a day. So what I did, I just took some old posts that were amazing in Facebook. I never mm -hmm. had like a blog or website or something. I took the best posts, re rewrote them, I, I rewrite them, and then I just put it there about vitamin D3, about uh, coffee, about exercise, about fasting, intermittent fasting, ice pads. I, I put, I selected like 50 top, 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 and I just put it there. And after one week, I was already past the 100 paid subscribers. So when I finished the first month, I had what, like 100. No. You started from scratch from and scratch, then you really yeah. built this yes. via Substack alone. Or did yes, you promote alone. your so, Substack newsletter via Facebook then? The thing is, I'm, I'm very scared of the online AI stuff. As in, if you import a list and then like... 50 people just report you, right? Then you just get banned on Gmail and everywhere, right? And I, I was afraid to get banned. So what I did, I started from scratch. 
And I say I sent like three emails in a month saying, I'm moving to Substack. If you want to follow me, I will write only there. This email uh, newsletter will disappear. I will erase all the content, everything. If you want to follow me, come there. And I, I wrote like an article, right, on Substack. And then I put it on Instagram. I put it on Facebook. I put it on LinkedIn, everywhere. So this is how I, I gathered the the list of people that really wanted to follow me. So you also share your paid posts everything. with everything. everything. Okay. So everything. there is no paywall then on Facebook and on Instagram. That's why I'm asking. No, no, no. no. So okay. when I write an article, it's either 100% free or 80% free or 50% free or 10% free. Um, and when, when I send a newsletter, it's just like that. When I publish an article, it's always paid. Even if it's a hundred percent free, at the end I will I will have the um, paywall, and I will say before the paywall, are you willing to support me with I don't know five cents a day by doing this to creating the biggest online you know blogosphere blah 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 blah. So I don't have free posts. I I always have paid posts. Because it's much easier like that, right? In your post, then, I don't see any call to actions, like subscribe or anything like this. Maybe um, it was just the one I picked, but... In the first part of the article, I will have one subscribe call to action. Then, as we go into detail, down below, I will have one, one more call to action saying, send a gift to your friend. And at the end of it, I will have the share button. And, and usually the, the gift call to action is after the paywall. So if you're not willing to pay me like, you know, eight euros a month, you will never gift this to a friend, right? It doesn't make sense. So in the free part, I have a call to action, only one subscribe. And then after the paywall, I will have um, a call to action to give this to a friend. And this works amazingly fine. Hi, it's Christina God. I'm also a Substack bestseller and I'd like to help you also get to 100 and more paid subscribers. For this, I created the Substack School. The Substack School is inside my online writing school and with my tutorial videos, the community, direct messages and the possibility to book a coaching session with me, you get all the guidance you need from me, from someone who has grown his newsletter from zero to 6,000 subscribers and also become a bestseller. So if you'd like to meet me, inside the Substack School, then become a paid subscriber to my online writing school. Link in the show notes below. How did you how did you build this community of raving fans? What is so special about you and your content, Valentine? I, I think there's a couple of points here. The first thing is, I will give you an example. A hundred people to choose from, right? Everyone on Substack is just a growth expert. And, it, and if you watch the posts, some of them, they don't even have the first badge, right? I mean, how can you be an expert in growth when, when you don't even have a badge, right? Yes, but I'm an author. It doesn't matter, right? So I think one of the um, main drivers of the page is I have like 14 years of maintaining my weight. Th th this is first. The second one is I'm authentic, sincere. I have nothing to hide. I mean, if I go to KFC and have a bucket, I will say I went there and have a bucket. And then I explain how I do this. You know, one thing that uh, it's different from everybody else, I think, it's that in 10 years, we never had an affiliation. Uh, we didn't take any commission from any kind of company. We never have had ads in articles or stuff like that, that whatever I'm saying it's the truth. This one has a, a big weight in the whole picture. And the second, the third thing is that we have, we have had a great experience with more than 10,000 people in 10 years. So there's also this piece of experience, personal experience, not, not having affiliations and stuff that somehow um, kept the reputation uh, 
somewhere high. I love that you shared that trust, daily repetition, daily repetition will take you to your desired destination. And you also shared that nothing is supernatural. Everything is trivial. Yeah. It's just repetition. Yeah. It's, it's like riding a I bike, mean, driving a car, brushing your teeth. So could you elaborate on this a bit more? It's like if you repeat something day after day after day after day, eventually you will get better. Public speaking or writing or handling Facebook or handling Substack or handling YouTube or handling whatever. If you do it every day, at some point, you will get better. The thing is, you don't have to practice like 10 hours a day. Even if you practice like five minutes a day, in one year, you'll get better of it. So I'm yeah. curious to learn more because I know that you studied engineering even a year in Dresden, in Germany. Could you share with us a bit more about this? So you are an engineer, but then you like transformed into a body engineer. My father told me, you know, if you want to have a, your future secured so you can access a job, right? And, you know, uh, go to university, become an engineer, and then you'll find some work. It was a trauma. <laughs> I mean, just in, in the first year, I was, oh my God, what I'm doing here? Anyway, in the fifth year, I got like a, the chance to go to Dresden. I studied there one year. And then I worked in a company called Svitelsky. That's very famous in Austria. Um, then in a joint venture between Svitelsky and Max Bergel. And then I switched to risk management and I, I was a consultant in Saudi Arabia for two years. I implemented there the risk management for a $40 billion project. But that was my, you know, my professional career. In the background, it was me struggling with the weight issues. And at some point I said, that's it. I can't take it no more. That was 14 years ago. And then I started studying. I fixed it for myself. And when I got back from Saudi Arabia, everyone just told me, you have to start this. You're so good at this. You're amazing. And this and this and this and this. And then I said, ah, OK, OK, OK. So I said, Let, let's start the company. What should the company name be? And I had this consultant. It was amazing. He got me like 20 amazing names. He said, just just say Valentin Buna and that's it. Or but not body engineering. It's like. It's so stupid. And oh my God, body engineering. No one knows how to pronounce this in Romanian. In the end, I chose body engineering. It was, it was like an engineer plus body, body engineering. He was right. I should have, you know, made the page Valentin Buna and that's it. And, and this is what I learned in marketing in, in 10 years. If you want to market yourself, put your name there. You already told us that you are writing for six hours. So I think... Uh, you don't have any employees at the moment because you want to do this on your own. Then you go to bed at eight, wake up again at three or four, you know, then go cycle with your kids to school or to kindergarten. Okay. How are you doing everything like this? I think the most amazing thing that keeps the children healthy, it's uh, putting them to sleep as early as possible. And as a parent, I mean, I, I've been a parent for 10 years with two kids. I mean, who doesn't want like two hours of quiet time? Who doesn't want that? When you have kids, you have no quiet time. So what I discovered at some point, I was so dead tired that, that I started going to sleep at 8 p.m. with my kids because I, I was just dead tired. So I said, let's go to sleep now because when they wake up at one o'clock, I already have slept like four hours or five hours. I can just wake up one hour and do this and that. And it's amazing. But if you put the kid to sleep and go to Netflix for three hours and you go to sleep at 12 o'clock and your kid wakes up at one o'clock, you'll be destroyed. And then I started going to sleep with my kids at eight o'clock and I discovered I can wake up at four o'clock feeling amazing. And from four o'clock, from seven o'clock when they wake up, I have the most amazing three hours every day. My coffee, it's already prepared. It's warm. I wake up at four o'clock. I start writing three hours. Amazing. It's 
that three hours, I, I can perform the duties for, for like six hours or seven hours. Then at seven, they wake up, we have breakfast, and then we go to, uh, to school. Okay, and then I come back and I have to clean up and everything. And then I will do my, you know, short training, and then I will, uh, you know, write some more and stuff. So I think three hours in the morning, imagine investing yourself, let's say two hours, right? You wake up at five o'clock from five o'clock to seven o'clock. Imagine investing yourself in yourself two hours a day. But to be able to do that, you have to go to sleep at eight o'clock. I would just abandon everything at eight o'clock, everything. So the kitchen is a mess. The toys yeah. are everywhere. Everything, it's, 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 it's a disaster, right? Forget mm -hmm. about it. Take a melatonin. Chill yourself. Take your phone. Put it somewhere <laughs> out of your reach. And take a Kindle. And then go to sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you can do all your chores with five times more efficiency. So imagine waking up at four o'clock, being fresh, and in two hours, finishing your second job. If you are looking at your energy level like, like a battery, going to sleep at 8 o'clock until 12 o'clock, it's like charging two times faster. And then at 12 o'clock, you take it out and you put the regular charger. So that's why many people, they woke up at 7 o'clock, they, they, they feel destroyed because they are not sufficient charged. So I think every hour you sleep before 12 o'clock, it's two times more efficient. 80% of the growth hormone that's responsible for anti-aging and repairing, it's secreted between eight o'clock in the evening and two in the morning. When you usually go to sleep late, you know what happens? You crave sweets all the time. You are hungry all the time. You just always open the fridge and close the fridge and you open the fridge and you close the fridge. You feel like eating all the time. I mean, this is clinically proven. Uh, the less you sleep, the more you have hunger and sweet cravings and higher appetite. There's a lots of people, they cannot lose weight even if their nutrition is amazing. You know why? Because they eat too much. You know why they eat too much? Because they go to sleep at one o'clock. When you go to sleep late at night, you're always feeling like eating more. So let's say this was an article, right? Here goes the paywall. Do you want to know how to go to sleep at eight o'clock? Sign up here. It's just five cents a day. What is your, let's call it, um, body engineering philosophy then? We just want to help people lose weight and maintain it without counting calories, without weighing the food, without eating at established time frames, and without doing so, so much sports like your training to go to like, I don't know, CrossFit events or stuff like that. We just encourage people to go to sleep early so they eat less and better. Uh, we encourage people to walk every day for minimum one hour a day because this is just something that burns calories like crazy imagine if you go if if you walk if you start walking today 60 minutes every day in one year you can lose up to 15 kilos without changing anything in your nutrition anything so uh, going early to bed walking standing and eating like our parents and grandparents did. Like, you know, some fish uh, with vegetables, some meat with vegetables, some soups, you know, I don't know if in Germany you have soups, but in Eastern Europe, they are very, you know, common to have all these kinds of meaty soups and stuff. Just imagine, so eating soups, eating like second course, uh, eating omelets, omelets are amazing, and staying away from processed junk like you know pretzels and breads and everything you know the germans are crazy about their bread yeah. their sweets amazing sweets amazing bread amazing potato amazing beer if you look at the statistics it's more than half of the population from germany it's overweight and obese advice i can give to everyone watching this if you're struggling to lose weight the first thing you should do is the big cleanup 
clean everything from your house. So when it's 11 o'clock in, in the afternoon, and you wait, when you open your fridge or your cabinets and everything, you shouldn't see there anything that's tempting. Nothing. Because if you just go out for a run, right? For one hour, it's 300 calories or something. You get back in, you eat two pretzels or, you know, Nutella or something, and it's gone. So the first thing that keeps me healthy at a healthy weight, it's not having temptations in the home. Nothing. I think if people watching this, they might say, okay, I'm nodding my head right now, or I'm, no, no, I'm shaking it because I, I don't think this is, this is the right thing. And I learned from you that you can't please all readers. And you mm. learned that you hate living in fear. And what I love is that you are now fearless and you have you aren't anxious anymore about writing. So could you tell us a bit more about this, Valentine? In 10 years of writing on Facebook, I, I was too lazy to have a blog, really. <laughs> it, it seems so complicated and complex and you have to do all this stuff. So I just wrote on Facebook and that's it. So I was using Facebook because it was so easy. It was effortless. I, I didn't have to know anything. Let's say my advice for the day was go to sleep early. Yeah, but you know, if you watch uh, Matthew Walker in his book, he says that you have these chronotypes and blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you write, eat more fish, then some people will say, no, but you know, the fish, they contain like mercury and it's toxic and blah, blah, blah. Okay. If you say, let's eat more vegetables, vegetables because they're amazing. No, but you know, the vegetables have pesticides and this and that. And whatever you say online, someone will say, no, it's not good. No, it's bullshit. That's stupid. And this and that. And after a couple of years, I, I cannot say I, I became immune, but I understood that whatever I write, there will be some raving fans that will say, oh my God, that's amazing. There will be some people that say, meh. And then they will have, there will be some naysayers all the time. Even if you have the most amazing clinically proven advice on the earth, they will say, no, that's not true. No, that's not okay. <laughs> so, so what I started after a couple of, couple of years, uh, whenever I saw like a comment that was a bit malicious or, you know, I just block, delete, block, delete. Mm -hmm. And now I have amazing peace of mind. There's, there's a lot of writers that get anxious, I think, because they are losing subscribers, paid subscribers, normal subscribers. You know what I say? It's amazing. Let them go. The more people unsubscribe, the more the nucleus becomes stronger. I mean, I'm happy all the time when I see unsubscribes. I'm happy because, you know, they're not my audience. What are your tips and tricks for... People who want to become prolific writers or as prolific as you are with writing like six hours uh, per day. And even if they are non-native uh, speakers. One day, scrolling to the notes, yeah. someone said there was like a top, top sub stack 25 best in the world, blah. I searched for it and I go to health and wellness when was, where is my uh, uh, sub stack? And I start scrolling. 50, 100, 200, uh, I couldn't find myself. So at some point, I just hit search and say, you know, articulate body engineering. And I saw 17. What? I mean, I just started yesterday, like nine months ago. Zero followers, zero, zero, zero everything, zero marketing skills, zero speaking skills, zero sales, right? And now I have like 70,000 people and 17 plays and blah. If you start today, you can see amazing progress in 10 years. If you already have a following, it's so much easier. If you already have a following, just write daily. What you also did was you had your YouTube channel. Do you want to like reanimate your YouTube channel and be there more? I know that you cringed a yes. little when you saw your videos, but I think your channel really has a lot of potential. I exercised myself filming for three months every day. So I did a video every day for three months. And then it was the 2020 March and I stopped because it was the pandemic year, blah, and everything went. So I started in January and I, until the 20th March, I did one video every day. I saw an increase in revenue in just two months. So I think it's worth it. But if you're start, starting now and you want 
to make like, let's say $100 a month or 200 or something, right? You're not going to start on YouTube. Until you get paid, you have to just work, work and work for, I don't know, months and years. Mm -hmm. But I have friends, they started a Substack. And from the first newsletter, first post, they gained 30 paid subscribers from the first. So I think my, my best advice for someone that's starting, forget about YouTube, start a Substack and activate the payments from the beginning and ask at the end of the Substack, say, are you willing to support me to write to, I don't know, give me wings. Uh, let me help you. I'm starting this, you know, just, just give any, any, any reason, right. And put the paywall there. Would you please help me in this endeavor and this, you know? And do you also have this tier on where people can become founding members or VIPs or something like this? Three times a year, there's an enrolling in our official program. So you cannot just Uh, buy our official program anytime you want. It's either January or it's Easter or it's September. Mm -hmm. So then I will just unlock the founding member option. And then it's like uh, 365 euros a year where you get all the benefits. You get the uh, WhatsApp group, you get the weekly webinars, uh, you get all the articles, you get uh, uh, tens of uh, video modules and everything. You see, so, this is so interesting talking with you because it's so different to what others do. And I think this is part of your success that you're really like, you know, doing things differently. Listen, I went once and did a Substack presentation at, uh -huh. uh, you know, like a business club, blah. And at the end of the presentation, I said, look, those are the stats. You can see them. Okay. If you want to work with me one year and I can teach you how to grow your Substack, It's 4,000 euros and it's available only now. And then I, I switched, you know, the founding members for 300 euros a month. I changed the benefits on the spot, you know, so they can pay. No one subscribed, of course. <laughs> But still, this, this is what I would do. If I, I would go somewhere to sell something, I will just switch the benefits on the spot. This is available only now. Um, what I was also wanted to say is that I'm working so hard on some posts about, you know, omega-3 and protein and supplements and this and this and this, like days in a row to create an amazing article. And then I get one paid subscriber, stuff like that. And I write about an air fryer and I get 70 paid subscribers. So, so I have some posts that are click by T. So people will just pay to see the stuff. And I have the really serious Stuff. So I mix the click bitey thing to convince the people that were, that were 90% convinced already they were going to subscribe, right? So I always combine a bit of, you know, click bitey thing here with the serious stuff. The people you told me about who went from like zero to 30 paid subscribers, are they also in the fitness and health area or are they in other? This is like a success stories. A success story from one of our WhatsApp groups. So it's this guy. We had like um, in December, we raised some money for some kids. And this guy just cooked a hundred buck, buck pass like this, you know, like cakes, cakes and sold them. And then he worked for a month like crazy to, you know, to make money for this cause. And he, he gained an amazing reputation. And then he started writing about how to save your money and how to invest them. And from our community, he gained 30 just like that. I see. I the more see. reputation you have, the easier you get to have paid subscribers. Yeah. But he followed my advice and he activated the payments from the first one. And I told him exactly how to structure it. So we did it kind of a bit together and what to write in the end. So people will just, yeah, yeah. Is this online or do you also meet them in real life or is this via your online course so do you actually also do like coaching and helping people like in real life or is it just 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 via your online course um i did one-on-ones for seven years in a row until the pandemic year came mm -hmm. until march 2020 then when we closed our venue and then we went 100 online 
And then I had like seven years from seven o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock in the afternoon, back to back meetings every day, either with one on ones or one on, on one on three people. So I also had groups like that. And every weekend I had workshops and workshops and workshops and workshops. And I did this seven years in a row until I burned my passion. And now I, I cannot work anymore with one with people one on one. I cannot. Fortunately, I have colleagues that are amazing at this. Uh, I get to write from my previous experience, but I don't do one one on ones. Uh, I, I cannot. I simply cannot. Hi, it's Christina. Do you want to learn more about Substack? Do you want to kickstart your newsletter journey on the platform? Then my Substack school is for you. Just become a paid subscriber. And with the paid subscription, you also become a member, a VIP member for my online writing school with the Substack school, where you will learn everything you need to kickstart your journey. Check out the box below to become a member and join me inside. So, Valentin, now I have some rapid fire questions for you because I know that you are writing a book and you shared that today is not about whether I'm writing the book, it's about how quickly it will be ready. When will your book be ready and what is it about? The book will be ready sometime, inshallah. I mean, the publisher will just push me every month. So, Valentin, how it's going, how it's going, you know? And I told them from the beginning, you're just giving me 7%, right? So I'm doing the work. You're getting 93%. I'm getting only 7%. But give me at least 10% and let's do this before I even knew Substack. Then sub, I met Substack, right? And then now I'm talking to my publisher and I tell them, Substack gives me 90%. What do you think is going to be prioritized, right? I mean, no one is going to publish a book to make a profit, right? So you publish a book to get renowned and stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to um, film the, the online course again. And after that, I will just focus on, focus on the book. So eventually, hopefully, maybe 2025, somewhere March. And after that, I will translate it into English, of course. Cool. And what will the book be about? It's about how to lose weight and maintain it without any effort, without counting calories. And so everything I've learned in the last, basically, 10 years working with thousands of people. And I know, Valentin, that you can show anything on a whiteboard. What is not so easy to show on a whiteboard? How difficult growing with being obese and being adolescent who is obese and practicing sports and destroying your body Uh, you know, I had five surgeries in the knees. I have a double herniated discs. And I have this because I always struggled to do sports to lose weight. So it's very difficult to express how hard it is to be overweight for decades. And I know that you have decided to strengthen your gluteal muscles. How much of this goal have you achieved? I think it's like 90% done. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're running marathons and triathlons and stuff, you don't actually grow your glutes. When you're running, you're not growing the glutes. So there are specific exercises for the glutes. I, I can send you a small video. It's like three exercises. I mean, it's squats, right? You can do squats, mm -hmm. uh, deadlifts, and then this kind of exercise when you just raise your, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I this know. one, it's a classic. So if you do this, Every week, every week, two years, three years, five years, eventually your glute would look better. And how many pull-ups can you do? I used to be able to do close to 10, mm -hmm. but then I had a, a, an accident. Uh, someone just opened a door. I was on the bicycle mm -hmm. and the door just cracked some ribs. And then I have a kidney that was ruptured. And then I stayed in, you know, ER like seven days and I couldn't do pull-ups for a year because when I tried to grab myself, I, I could feel inside, you know, like everything was hurting inside. So now, now I'm back on track and I can do like seven and I, I'm, I'm going to do this every day. Guess what's going to happen in three years or five years or 10 years? I, I, I will do, I will definitely, definitely do 10 or more, right? Not, nothing can stop me. If I can just do 
three sets every week, every week, every week, every week. In three years, I'll get better. And talking about cycling, Valentin, what is your favorite thing to do with your two kids? It's like monkey see, monkey do. I'm just trying to do the things I want them to do. So I will not tell them, pick up the trash from, from the sidewalk. I, will, I would pick up the trash and put it there and say nothing. I'm just trying to be the best example for them. What are your goals for this year and 2025? 2025, 20, for, for this year, I just have to finish the, the online course to film it again, to continue writing on a daily basis on Substack until my following will say, just stop, just do three, 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 three a week or something. I always have a poll there. Are these posts long enough? Is it too short? Do you want me to, to write like three times a week? Is it okay? Um, in the beginning, in the first three months, it was like 95% of the readers said, it's amazing on a daily basis, just continue. Now it's like 70%. So I will continue to write on a daily basis, at least for a year. So I have three more months. Uh, and then I think I will start like, I will continue writing on a daily basis, but I will have like a, a long post today and then a short tomorrow. For 2025, I'm planning of not selling any more any kind of nutrition course. So okay. I want to just get all uh, my uh, financial support from, for, from being a writer. Wow, that's really Actually, interesting. Actually, I, I want to include the online course to create one platform for all, for everything, everything, just, you know, seven euros a month or something. So, and how can we connect with you, all those who are already now fall in love with you and your storytelling, Valentin? I promise, starting tomorrow, when you go to Instagram, you, you will only see content in English. Romanians are very good at English, right? Germans are not good at Romanian. So all my content on Instagram will be in English. And hopefully... When you go to my Facebook page, you know, the official body engineering page, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, when I write a new article, to have it on English in parallel, published in the same day. So Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube is useless because it's in Romanian only. And of course, uh, Substack Notes. Since we're here, I mean, uh, the publication in, in English it's not really working, you know? If no one knows you, no one trusts you, no one is going to buy from you, right? So if you please want to learn more about what I'm doing, it's Valentin Buna, English edition. My colleague there, Octavian, will translate everything and adapt into English. And hopefully I can get your support to, to grow also in English. Valentin, thank you so much for this interview. It was delightful. You want more interviews, you want more tutorials, and you are interested in live sessions, then subscribe to my YouTube channel and please like this video so more people can see it. See you in the next video.